Hello and welcome to another League of Legends tutorial and in this one the second edition of our new how to win series where we look at a core gameplay mechanic with an in-depth example so that you can take it and use it to climb and win your own games. We are going to be taking a look at something that is not specific to junglers but rather to every role on the map and obviously that would be roaming. One of the core mechanisms of carrying yourself from a support mid lane and even top lane position is using your concept of back timing, mini wave pushing, matchups, and then translating that to having your presence go all over the map, creating numbers advantages for your teams that translate to game winning plays. Now, as usual, we have a great game to look at where roaming was prevalent and helped snowball a huge early lead for his team. But before we do that, I just want to outline some basics, some principles you should keep in mind as a mid laner as well as a support all of that with fancy effects and more in 15 seconds. So before we head directly into our gameplay, I want to look at this game with Aurelia, Alistair and Kane where the outcome of the early game was dictated entirely by global map presence from every one of the team members. We look at this Aurelia vs Ryze in this case. She's been pushed in against her wave, she's not having the best time early. She chunks Ryze in order to create a bit of space, goes back to base to get an item, and then as she teleports in, you see a 3-man Wombo gank, and this is most notable because he just teleported back into the lane and now had to burn his flash and he still ended up falling. This is delaying his earlier tier as long as possible, so it's an excellent play and roam by the Alistair. Now, in this whole concept of roams breeding more roams, as well as, you know, for junglers, what do we say? When the Scuttle Crab is now 315, it gives laners time to have some sort of lane priority or you can contribute to create that lane priority like the Kane just did. And this means that when a skirmish breaks out with him and Sejuani in the river, it really is right there to rotate and you would have noticed that the Silas has huge lane priority in the top lane and he also rotates down both lanes roaming to kill the Sejuani and give that crucial 315 crab to the cane. Yes, a jungler's role is to gank and have lane impact, but imagine if all lanes are looking out and playing that kind of game as well and understand when to leave, when to roam and when to head back. If we rewind and look at it from the support's perspective, and this is why it's important for all positions to understand lane states and item spikes, the Kaiser wants to go for the tier build. She wants to build that mana moon, which means when she has 700 gold, she wants to go back to base and get that as soon as possible. And because they pushed the wave in order for this to happen, it gives Alistair time to rotate up to the mid lane, knowing full well there will be no vision on that side. Sejuani started on the bot, she's going to be on the top side, she wants to get that top 315 crab, that means it gives the Alistair time to move on up through no vision and gank with the cane, getting off a valuable kill. Yes, this offsets his back timing with his ADC, but the enemy bot had to push out the wave in any case before they could return to base, so not too much will be lost. And the impact around the map from the Silas, Kane, and Aurelius perspective because of his roam was very powerful. And this brings to mind the very important concept, if you're a support especially, when do we roam? And a lot of the time this will be if there was a trade, if you died, if you had to go back to base because you were chunked, whatever event leads you to be distorted in back timings from your ADC, that's when you can use that time to go up and ward, or in this case like Pike, who's great at roaming of course, collapse on a jungler who shows an enemy vision, have the rest of your team help you as well if everyone collapses and everyone roams, it will lead to a more positive outcome of the game. And then yes, slow elo players are going to complain that no one ever rotates. Well, that's the point of the video. I'm trying to show you from an all roles perspective why it's important for everyone to pay attention to these things. And now again, from a mid laner perspective, specifically mid laners, if you are not one of those champions, if you're playing a champion that's very passive, that farms under tower and you're in that low MMR range, stop doing that. Play something that can shove roam and impact the map. And it's important to consider what happens when the enemy team roams. Well, the Kane gets caught out fighting the Sejuani. The Silas is also there. The enemy jungler, top laner, and mid laner all progress to that top side of the map. Well, Aurelia knows she's quite fed from her early roams. She's got on a lead from the Alistair's presence as well. So how can she translate that to the map while the enemy team is busy on the top side? Now, it's worth noting, if the enemy team wins that 3v2, that means they will have angle of attack on ganking the mid lane. So she could hang around and, you know, hit some tower platings, but she risks being caught out. And at the same time, you can then go to the bottom side of the map knowing no one can interfere and take the lead that you have and go and grab a double kill with your bot lane. It, that's absolutely huge. Why is it huge? Well, look at your bot lane now. They get free attacks 
on the remaining tower plates as well as the fact they're denying a huge wave to the enemy. It's a great roam, it impacts everyone, it helps her, it helps her bottom lane, and that's the whole point of this. So, let's, with that in mind, with all that in mind, jump into our game. We are going to be looking at a high elo Talon main, and of course Talon is the quintessential roaming mid laner. And a lot of champions cannot do what he can do, but this is why he can be such an effective pick no matter what rank you might be. Things like Katarina, Zed, LeBlanc, uh, maybe LeBlanc's skill ceilings may be a little bit high, but the reason they do so well in certain MMRs is because of their ability to simply roam and impact side lanes. They're not sitting in mid farming and doing nothing, they're helping the jungler invade. They're picking off enemies, they're making an impact globally. And Twisted Fate's another great example of this, he doesn't have the you know, assassin kind of fancy playstyle, but with teleport in his ultimate, you can do the same kind of playstyle, punishing fights, punishing over positioning, and getting your side lanes fed, as well as yourself, of course. And so the first point to bring up is when you want to all in a champion, like Talon does here, he does get trapped under tower, he manages to kill the Rise, but let's just rewind a few seconds, you see the Jarvan just ganked on the bottom lane. That means you know he's coming up top, so the timing for your all in needs to be calculated. You know that the jungle is going to be right there. If you mess up, he's going to be there to punish you. But at the same time, he wants to use his level 2 ignite advantage to try and get a kill to get himself snowballing. Now, Jarvan flashes in. There's a little bit of luck involved. And because he's Talon, off he runs into the abyss, into the darkness. His Rek'Sai is actually stealing the blue buff from the Jarvan. Just when you thought we'd had enough of the uh, red Krug's blue buff stealing. Here it is. They set a trap and the Talon grabs another kill. This now is a perfect beginning for him. He can go back to base, get a huge item spike. And if you are a roaming mid laner who loves to shove, this is the kind of early game you want. And even if you don't have this early game, all right, you can still shove waves, be a bit more patient like the Aurelia was. Maybe once you get a gank, once you get an item and you can shove a bit more, that's what you like. You know Ryze is going to want to stack that tier to scale into the game. Your job is to not let that happen by getting yourself fed as well as your team, helping your jungler by being another jungler. And this is why this Talon likes to build that Tiamat Moby Boots Rush. It gives him map mobility and it also gives him wave clear. Throw out your W, hit the Tiamat and look to where you can make an impact. And we're going to count the roams he does and we're going to go through it quite quickly because there's a lot of them. And we're going to talk about some of the pathing things he does and things you should look out for when you're doing it. The first thing he does is to show in the bottom lane. He syncs up with his jungler, he sees where his jungler is going to be ganking. He tries to flank in case his help is needed and even though they grab a kill without him and he doesn't get anything from it, He's got enough map mobility and scaling, as well as, you know, he'll get his Moby Boots to go back and forth and still reach most of the waves that he doesn't lose too much to the towers. The fact that he didn't get anything is okay. It shows that this Talon is looking to roam and the enemy better be ready to throw down those control wards that many people don't use and then complain that Talon's roaming. You know, like when you're playing mid lane and the Twisted Fate ults and then your team passively aggressively pings you like you're meant to follow him somehow. We can't all be Yumi, guys. So what's the next move? Shove the wave? Hey look, top lane's pushing. That's what you want to look out for. Top lane is pushing. Let me go one up there. Hey look, Jarvan is surprising us from the bush. Oh no, I'm gonna ult and he's dead. You, you see the impact that the early kill on Jarvan had? He's now way behind in experience. You're level 6, he's level 4, and you just shut him down again. And now I want to highlight one of the most important things about roaming. Whether you're reacting to a play, whether you're making a play, whether your team's getting a dragon. When you go back from the lane you roam to or the location you roam to all the way to your mid lane again, why does everyone go down the river? What if Ryze, who wasn't on the map, was hiding somewhere and tried to hit you with a combo? What if it wasn't Ryze? What if it was a Zed and you just walked into a bush? This happens all the time, especially in mid and low MMRs. Just because you're roaming like a beast doesn't mean you can wander into the abyss like a void monster. You need to make smart decisions. In this case, he just rotates around the back of the Herald Pit. He knows there's gonna be no one there. Ryze shows again in the mid lane. He's just being safe. And just when you thought I was ignoring ADCs, you know, because most of the time you just want CS and you don't care about anyone else, Everyone on the red team rotates and collapses on the Nautilus and the Jarvan at the second red buff spawn and Talon grabs himself another kill. Rome number three already. Having a team be proactive led by your mid laner dictating that pace is exactly what you need to do to win and climb no matter where you are. And this is the important part about roaming. You're gonna get a lead, you might be behind in experience sometimes, but you will have a golden item advantage. Use that on the enemy laner. Don't let them get away with tower plate hits. Don't let them get away with free farming. You still need to get back to your lane to defend those things, all right? You're not giving up all your farm and all the tower plates. I mean, you're just denying a little bit to yourself, but getting way more in return. So, and be sure, as I said, to use that lead like the Talon does here. 
He runs down the mid lane, he's got a huge advantage, he fully stacks Ryze's other tier, and now, basically, the enemy should be demoralized, this, and while this Talon is controlling this entire game more than the Rek'Sai jungle. And does he sit around and enjoy his victory? No, straight to the top lane. Does he get a gank off? Nope. But it's Teamer vs Camille, and even if it's warded, because it will be warded now, the enemy team is uh, wising up to what's going on. Moby Boots, Teamer, Talon only means one thing. It doesn't matter, it's pressure release for your laner just like a jungler. He's thinking like a jungler while also funneling himself CS in the mid lane. It's kind of fun if you think about it. If you're a jungle main and you're looking for off roll, look for this kind of playstyle. It can be really rewarding when you combine CS, lane knowledge and matchups along with your jungle pathing. And so even though nothing happens, he goes back to the mid lane. And yes, it's nice when your lanes are winning because obviously he rotates down to the bottom lane, gets a cleanup kill on the Nautilus. And obviously lanes won't always all win and they won't always match up well. But when you make these plays, say his bottom lane was losing and they do a 3v2 and they get two kills, it's even better. And the fact that they are winning, these lanes are winning, is a byproduct of not only having Rek'Sai jungle pressure, but also having talent perma roam pressure. Because you cannot push, you cannot play freely, you cannot play without thinking and just dominate your lane when you know the enemy mid could show up at any point, you know he's got Moby Boots, you know Rek'Sai is the enemy jungler. And so as a laner, there's nothing more frustrating to play bot or top when a mid and jungler are doing this kind of action. And just on that note, he goes bot lane, gets the kill, shoves and goes to the top lane and gets another kill. And it's basically getting quite exhausting. It's so many roams at this stage, but the guy is so far ahead and he's just controlling the entire map. The Rex can play so freely. So if you're in the low and mid MMRs and you wanna blame your jungler for not ganking, why don't you become the jungler? Go gank yourself. You don't necessarily need them, it's nice when you both do it, as you can see in this game, but if they're not doing it, you can still win games and carry games very easily with this kind of playstyle. And that goes for the same for supports. And one additional thing to note when you are roaming as a mid laner, if the lanes, the side lanes are not in a position for you to do so, maybe they're hard pushing, they're winning on their own, it's a very well warded, you can still go into the enemy jungler and because you have a gold and level lead, you can 1v1 them. And yes, sometimes a little bit of luck is involved, you can just say calculated, walking out with another kill. It is a well-known jungle strategy that when all your lanes are winning, you go into the enemy jungle, you steal his stuff, you ward it deep, you take him out of the game, and so your laners can keep up the pressure without worrying about the enemy jungler flanking from a good angle and shutting them down. And as a mid laner, as a support, when this is the case, you can do the same thing. I showed it with my Zyra game a few weeks ago when I was talking about jungle tracking. My Kindred wasn't in position to get a mark, I saw the Hecarim was low HP, so I rotated up, I killed him, I left the ward, and now everyone knows where he is and knows he's off the map. I know we spoke about mid lane a lot, just because of their proximity to the side lanes, they have much more accessibility than a top laner does. Top laners can still win their lane, invade the jungler at buffs, they can TP to bottom lane, they can rotate with an ultimate down to mid lane. All of this is within your hands and is one of the biggest determining factors of winning games. And think about it, why stall and farm and not react and watch the enemy move around the whole map while you just CS in the mid lane and you don't help anyone on your team even if you are fed. Take control of the game, get yourself fed and then punish the split pushing ADCs for that free LP. Trust me, they are like food if you rotate and roam early game. They just become, well I was going to say it's like chicken nuggets but I suppose they have to be worth more than that. So I guess they're just like fries, they're like a side dish. Minion experience, free ADC kill, sounds good to me. And of course, closing our games, I did a video on Macro, I will mention it a few times whenever I don't show the end of games. Be sure to look at that if you are interested in that aspect of the game. And I hope this opened your eyes a little bit to how much one can truly roam and own with the right champion and the right combination of knowledge of matchups and jungle pathing and tracking. It's a huge component to your roaming game. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Like, share and comment if you did. Please subscribe for more League of Legends and Jungle Guides coming very soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.